Good morning, everyone. I got a mockingbird on that uh, telephone wire up behind me. I don't know if you can hear it. Hi, my name's Kevin Toppenberg. I'm refurbishing a Bridgeport mill. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit shorter. We're going to work on getting the ram and the turret off the uh, column. And I really struggle with this one because it just stuck for quite a while. I'll have to show you how I end up getting it off. So come along. Hope you enjoy the journey. I'm refurbishing a Bridgeport mill over there. If you look here, see how this has the original flaking powder, uh, pattern and here it's all gone. So that means that this is worn down below this level of surface. So really, if I'm gonna resurface that, I need to be able to make that all flat and even on both sides. So how am I gonna judge exactly whether it's flat or not? Well, you usually use a surface plate for that, which is a very high precision surface. And I have a little tiny one here, uh, like that big, but that's really not big enough for everything that I need. And then furthermore, when I go to do this part here, you know, I can, I could theoretically uh, maybe lift this up onto a surface plate, but think about how heavy that's going to be. And so it's maybe better to put your reference surface there than putting this on the reference surface. And then furthermore, if you're going to get into there, how are you going to do that? So that's kind of where a, a machinist straight edge can come in. And here is the one that I've made, and we're going to talk about doing that today. Well, future Kevin here. When I was filming this, I had planned on making that straight edge and using that to get all my surfaces nice and flat. Uh, I even made a whole video about uh, doing that. And at the end, I thought that I had it and had a viewer that uh, posted a comment that made me go back and check one last time and he was right, it, it just wasn't flat. So that kind of scrapped that whole plan for that. But I think I'm able to uh, get the thing reasonably workable, even without uh, scraping and remachining all the surfaces. Uh, Keith Rutger always uh, does this for his machines, and I'm always very envious of his skill. Um, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll get there and have all the tools. Well, here I have my patent pending Dropomatic 5000. I'm going to try to get that head down. What could go wrong? <laughs> much better than I feared. Um, worked pretty well. Got it safely down on the ground. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to um, store it. It's a it's an awkward shape and I think it probably needs to be somewhere down on the ground because I can just see it flipping if I set it up on something. So I'm going to take it around and uh, get it settled down. Okay, success. And this is where this head's going to live until I get the base done. Then I'm going to come back and work on it. That'll probably be like the last thing I do. Which, if it turns out to be a train wreck of a head, I'm going to wish I would have done this first, but... It's all about the journey. Alright! The next part to get off is this boom or whatever you call this part and my other clone mill had a gib that you could pull out and it became quite loose but for the life of me I do not think this one has one and it's really stiff and whoever had it before has broken this part off so I tried putting some oil in there but I got it to slide a little bit by using that ratchet strap. And I just put my drop o matic away, but I think I'm gonna have to get it back out again and hook this up to give it support. And I think I'm gonna try to slide it off out the front. Like a queen, but you're not quite looking down on those traveling lights. I had best be on my way. I 
I wasn't able to get the ram or slide loose, so I'm taking the, I haven't even learned my terminology, but this uh, rotary part off with it, and then I'll flip it over and figure out why I can't separate them. I'm trying to see if I can flip this over at the same time that I bring it down. At least onto its side. This table top is just sitting on the base and there's about this much, about this much uh, overhang. So really the weight needs to be in. Here it is, upside down, or rather on its side. And I was thinking I was gonna be able to see what was going on in there, why it was not coming off. But I don't see it there either. So I think I'm gonna to have to go do some research to figure out what the proper way is to slide this off. You still got these bolts in, and I know that there's these little square things in there. And Maybe I'm supposed to slide the bolt out and then let those blocks slide. That might be a, a, an answer. All right, I'm gonna keep working on it. Just see, I don't want that weight out past that ledge. Okay, I've got these, um, I've got these blocks off. These are the locks. And when you screw in it, it spreads it apart and that get grips against the side. And these normally fit in here like this. And then they have those pegs to keep it from falling down in the hole. And I thought we could just maybe just pull it straight out, but um, there's, a, there's a high spot right there. And it looks almost like they manufactured it that way because maybe they didn't want them falling out. So both of those ha ha um, have that. So you have to kind of go all the way and then slide it out and then slide it the other way. And um, I did figure out my terminology. This is the ram, this is the turret. So I'm going to uh, slide that turret completely off and then I can clean all this because it's very sticky. I'm wanting to take that turret off completely and I've cleaned up. I used this uh, wood chisel to just uh, scrape off a lot of old dried uh, grease and Got it. So it's sliding very nice and it'll get all the way down, but then the last like three inches it sticks and it won't come off that way. And the same thing, it gets almost all the way down and it sticks and it won't come off that way. 
Now it is moving when I use the, the ratchet strap and I don't think there's anything that's uh, jamming it. I guess it just must be tight there. Um, I'm a little nervous about how I'm gonna get it back on, but I feel like I need to take it off to get it all cleaned out. So I may regret this. I used a ratchet strap here, wrapped around from here to the front, and I was able to move it all the way, except for like the last, I've now I've moved it back a little bit, so maybe the last two inches, and it just jams, and I can't go any farther. So there must be something that's machined that way. So when I get it back in the normal range, it moves, moves fine. I'm wondering whether maybe they purposefully leave these ends a little thick and then maybe heat that up and then slide it on and let it cool. And that way the ram doesn't go too far and fall off and cause damage to the mill. I don't know, I got, guess I'm gonna have to leave it together. I was able to get the ram off the turret. The problem was the closer I got to the end of the turret, the ram was leaning down and then that's what was binding. And so at one point I saw it move sideways and like, oh, what's going up with that? And then I lifted it and it just slid right off. So that was the problem there. Should have known that. Um, cleaned up, I don't know if you call that the neck of it or what that would be. Uh, if you call the bridge port the head, I guess that would be a neck. The ram moves forwards and backwards through a rack and pinion gear. The base of the ram has the rack and then there's a pin that has the pinion gear and this comes out and there's a handle and you rotate the handle to slide the head back and forth. And this is the pin that I had previously showed. Uh, the handle broke off and then someone had got after it with some vice grips and just mangled it all up. Uh, when I got the turret and the ram apart, I was able to get that pin separated and I took it and put it in the lathe and got it nicely cleaned up and polished. My other mill had a slot that went completely through it and there was a sliding bar, kind of what you see on a vise, and you can slide that bar all the way to one side. You can get quite a bit of torque on it. And I thought about converting this into that form rather than having a uh, screw and a handle again, but ultimately I decided to keep it the way it was originally and uh, it seems like I'm getting plenty of force that way. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. I'm gonna be trying to make these videos a little bit shorter than they have been in the past, a little bit easier to watch, a little bit easier to make. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment. I hope you are enjoying the journey. We've got lots of content to come. Disappear into the blue Wrap your fingers Around the great escape Peace out